Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog Snippets. In the last video, we discussed the waveform of inductor current in a switching converter. In this video, we will continue the theme and will look at another important waveform, the waveform of the switching voltage. In the video number 50, we saw that a switching converter has three DC voltages. We call those high voltage, medium voltage and low voltage. One end of the inductor is permanently connected to the medium voltage and the other end swings between high voltage and low voltage. And the voltage of this switching end is known as well switching voltage. Like inductor current, this switching voltage also has a simple waveform. But it has somewhat more features than inductor current. Switching voltage is connected to either high voltage or low voltage using switches. Accordingly, there are two switches. In this video, we will call them high side switch and low side switch. Now, these switches are not created equal. Depending on the converter topology, one of the switches can be replaced by a diode. Let's call the switch which cannot be replaced by diode our main switch. And let's call the other switch, well, other switch. In buck and IBBs, high side switch is our main switch and in the boost it is other way round. Another important point to remember is that the high side switch and low side switches are never turned on at the same time. And the reason is obvious, we don't want to short high voltage and low voltage by low impedance switches. And this scheme is known as break before make switching. Let's say ENH is the control voltage of high voltage switch and ENL is control voltage of low voltage switch. Let's further assume that one means switch is on and zero means switch is off. So a typical switch control will look like this. So when high side enable is high, the low side enable must be zero and the vice versa. Notice that it is allowed to make both switches off at the same time. Okay, now let's look at the switching voltage. Let's assume we have ideal switches here. When it is on, resistance is zero, and when it is off, it's perfectly open. Under those conditions, the switching voltage will be high when high side enable is on, and low when low side enable is on. This part was simple. Interesting things happen, as always, in between. Let's consider a buck converter. In a buck converter, input voltage is high voltage, ground is low voltage and output is middle voltage. High side switch is our main switch and low side switch is the other switch. High side on phase is magnetizing phase and low side on is demagnetizing phase. The inductor current will ramp up during T on. At the end of T on, the high side enable switch is turned off. So at that point, both switches are off but we still have an inductor with a current in it. Recall for video number 48 that in such a situation, inductor will try to reverse its polarity. So the switching voltage will dive towards the low voltage and eventually it will be caught by the body diode of the low side switch. So what do we have here? We have a current flowing from the ground through the body diode, through the inductor to the output. In normal life, we are used to see current flowing from high voltage to low voltage terminals. But here that logic is turned on its head. Here current is flowing from ground to a positive voltage. And that is happening because inductor with a current is working as a ideal current source. Okay, how about the voltage at the switching node? Well, it will be a diode drop below the ground. That means it will have a 0.7 volt negative voltage. So it will look something like this. Okay, what happens when we turn off the low side switch? Assuming that the inductor current is still positive, current will start flowing through the body diode again. And hence the switching voltage will jump back to the negative 0.7 volt. And when high side switch turns on, it will go back to the high voltage. So basically you will see these little undershoots at the beginning and end of the T off. Here we are assuming that both inductor peak and valley currents are positive. But that may not be true all the time. So let's consider the other cases. Let's first consider that inductor valley current is negative. This is expected at low load currents in forced CCM operation. 
If you are not sure what force cesium means, then it's good idea to revisit video number 51. Coming back to the negative valley current, this situation is kind of a mirror image of what happened at the end of the T on. Here inductor current has switched direction and now we are magnetizing it in opposite direction. Why are we saying that? Isn't T off supposed to be demagnetizing phase? Well, yes, if inductor current reduces in absolute value. Notice that when inductor current crosses zero and becomes negative, the absolute value of inductor current starts to increase, although in the negative direction. So you can say that inductor enters reverse magnetizing phase. In this phase, inductor takes energy from the output and will dump it back to the input. So in this situation, the moment we turn off the low side switch, the inductor will try to reverse its polarity again. So switching voltage will fly high and will be caught by the high side body diode. So now current is flowing from the output into the inductor, into the high side body diode and into the supply. Again, it is against our conventional wisdom that current flows from the high voltage to the low voltage. And the reason is that inductor is working as a current source. And in this case, switching voltage will be a diode above the input voltage. So we can have these two possibilities depending on whether valley current is positive or negative. But there is a third possibility. That valley current is exactly zero when low side switch is turned off. Now, this may not be a coincidence. This actually happens in DCM operation. In fact, order of the event is exact opposite. We turn off the low side switch when inductor current reaches zero. The same thing will also happen in asynchronous rectifiers. Where we don't have the low side switch, we just have the catch diode. As inductor current is zero by definition in this case, it will neither stay at the low voltage nor goes to the high voltage, but just stays at the mid voltage. So we can see that the switching voltage behaves in three different ways depending on whether the valley current is positive, negative or zero. In fact, this is true for this side as well. The peak current can also be negative in certain situations. And we switch will look like this in those conditions. And although the inductor current will not be zero by design at the end of T on, as was the case here, it may very well happen by chance and switching voltage will be at mid voltage during those rare occasions. So you have seen that there are range of possibilities during this transition time depending on the inductor current value. Now obviously switching voltage doesn't jump in steps as we have shown here. In reality there will be finite turn on and off of these enable signals and also parasitic capacitance at the switching node. And that means there will be a finite rise or fall time in the switching node voltage. But those details we will discuss in another video. I want to quickly look at the boost waveform before we finish the video. And IBB will be pretty similar to the buck. In case of boost, output is the high voltage, the low voltage is still the ground, and input is the middle voltage. Low side switch is our main switch and high side switch is the other switch. And so low side on is T on. So let's start with positive peak, positive valley inductor current situation. We switch is ground during T on and at the output during T off. When on time terminates, the inductor voltage tries to reverse the polarity and it will be caught by the high side body diode. So switching voltage will end up a diode above the output. At the end of T off, for the positive valley current, it will go back to the diode voltage. So the switching voltage looks something like this. Can you make out any familiar image in this waveform? This or possibly this looks pretty similar, right? Well, many people think so anyways. In certain communities, this waveform is also known as Batman waveform or rabbit ear waveform. And now you know why. Anyways, let's move on. For negative valley current, it will be the low side body diode which will conduct after T off. Not so bad many now, is it? And for DCM operation, it will settle to the mid voltage. And again, these three possibilities exist for the other side as well. 
These small features in switching waveform give you valuable information about your converter. For example, it can tell you how long is the dead time. It can also tell you about the temperature of the switch. Since diode voltage is a CTAT voltage, there is a strong correlation between the temperature of the switches and these overshoots. Of course, looking at these waveforms, you can make out whether it's a synchronous rectifier or a synchronous rectifier. A synchronous rectifier will have a flat voltage in this region. This waveform can also tell you whether you are in CCM or in DCM operation. And of course, whether your current is negative, positive or zero during these transitions. And I think it is a lot of information just looking at the single waveform. And that is all for this video. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.